Self-audit not only helps food service establishments determine what it is doing right and wrong, it can improve your overall food safety culture. In this month's two-part TAG Talks, TAG Food Safety Manager Carla Acosta details how to prepare and conduct food safety audits in restaurants and retail food establishments. Welcome, Carla. Thank you, Lisa. I'm happy to be here. So in part one of this TAG Talks, we discuss how to prepare to conduct a self-audit. So Carla, just why are self-audits important and what are the benefits? Absolutely. So there's a lot of benefits, but conducting a self-audit is an essential practice to ensure that food handling and preparation processes in your establishment meet the highest standards. So there's many benefits that come from self-auditing. Primarily, it serves as a good measure or indicator of how your operation is doing. And ideally, you want to get a third party to also do these assessments for you because it's much more efficient and unbiased to have an outsider looking inside into your operation. But there are also many great benefits to self-auditing that include being proactive and ensuring that all documents are in place, which I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, correcting deficiencies as they arise and training employees as needed on the spot, especially if your employees see you on the floor, hands on and modeling the food safety behaviors that you want to see in your operation. And of course, it prepares you for when the real inspection comes along and it helps ease some of that audit nervousness because you and your employees are used to audits at that point and know the procedures and what will be asked and expected of you. So how do I get started? Great question. So getting started, I'm going to call this step zero because it's assumed okay. that all managers or people in charge know, but you should become familiarized with the latest version of the FDA food code and the relevant food loss for your operation uh, in your jurisdiction, which is very important. So once you know what the specific requirements are for your operation, you can get started with step number one. So step number one is to establish a checklist. So develop a comprehensive checklist based on applicable food safety regulations, industry best practices, and your specific food establishments, food safety policies. So the checklist should include critical areas such as food storage, food handling, personal hygiene practices, equipment maintenance, cleaning and sanitation procedures, documentation, which again, I'll talk about in a bit, and then staff training. And I'll go into more detail for the next steps on what exactly are the, some of the things to look for, but that's step number one. So now step number two, you'll want to conduct a physical inspection, not a self audit, just a thorough physical inspection first to see what's deficient and needs a work order so you can fix it. So perform a thorough inspection of your facility, paying close attention to the key areas, which include storage areas, the refrigerator or refrigeration units, the food preparation areas, cooking equipment, and sanitation stations. So things you want to ask yourself while you're looking at these items are, is the equipment falling apart? You'll want to look at the fryer baskets to make sure that there's no metal pieces sticking out. You'll want to look at your sanitation st stations and check the strength and is it calibrated correctly? And then is it even the right amount of product uh, going into your sinks? If that's the case, you'll want to, if you're getting a third party uh, doing your products and calibrating that for you, then you'll want to get into contact with them if they're off. And then are there any holes that lead to the outside of the facility, including the weather strips? If you can see light to the outside from the bottom of your door, then that's a deficiency that you want to take care of in terms of tests. So while you're doing this and while on the topic of tests, while you're doing this physical inspection, you'll want to check for any signs of contamination, pests, equipment malfunction, or poor hygiene practices. And with pests, 
that could be a whole other tag talk within itself, but you'll want to check for basically any random trash around your facility. That's usually uh, any random trash piled into one. That's the sign of a nest or any pepper tends to be, uh, it comes from cockroach, cockroach feces or any uh, what looks like sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles or chocolate or raisins, <laughs> uh, those would be um, pests or rodent feces as well. So you want to look for those two signs. I promise no one's going around sprinkling chocolate sprinkles or raisins <laughs> around your establishment. So you'll want to check for that. And then step number three, this one's kind of a long one, but here are some of the things that you'll want to add to your checklist. So once you've established step zero, step one, step two, step number three, you'll want to assess food storage and handling practices. So evaluate how your ingredients and food items are being received, stored, labeled and rotated to ensure that there's proper stock management and minimize the risk of cross-contamination. You'll want to inspect all of the storage areas, including your fridge, your freezers, your dry storage, and any shelving units, and check for proper temperature control. Make sure that all of your refrigeration or freezers or hot holding units have uh, an, a thermometer inside. It's properly working. You'll want to also look into the segregation of raw and ready to eat foods. Are they being separated? Are the right colored cutting boards being utilized? And you'll also want to look into the appropriate packaging, labeling, and verify that foods are stored off of the floor. And of course, remember FIFO, first in, first out, checking to see in your shelves, your, your food storage, that that system is being followed. And then for your hygiene practices, this is one of the biggest deficiencies. Uh, back when I was a health inspector, this is the number one violation. But you'll want to assess the personal hygiene practices of your staff. So this includes hand washing, proper use of gloves, clean work attire, and the use of no jewelry other than a plain band wedding ring. And you want to ensure that employees are trained on personal hygiene protocols and have access to hand washing stations with soap, sanitizers, and single use paper towels. When it comes to hand washing, one thing I always saw is that when you do an audit or an inspection, employees tend to try to do the right thing. And so they run to the hand washing sink, but oftentimes they're actually incorrectly washing their hands. So hand washing is just one of those things that seems like common sense, but it's actually not. So make sure that your employees are doing the right steps properly and in the right order. You'll want to also evaluate food preparation practices. So observe how food is being prepared, how it's cooked and how it's served. Assess any cross-contamination prevention measures, such as separating your cutting boards for raw and cooked foods, um, which I mentioned earlier with the cut colored coated cutting boards. Such a tongue twister. Yeah. And, make, <laughs> and making sure that there's uh, calibrated thermometers being used as well. And then in terms of cleaning and sanitation procedures, you'll want to assess the effectiveness and the consistency of cleaning and sanitation protocols. So verify that the cleaning schedules are being followed and that the approved sanitizers are being used. So evaluate the frequency of cleaning. So is the current frequency enough? Does it need to be increased? Does it need to change to another day? Does it need to change to a different shift maybe? And does it, uh, yeah, just does it need to be adjusted? Check also for the proper maintenance of cleaning equipment and proper procedures that are in place for cleaning food contact surfaces, utensils, and equipment as well. And then back to the pest control aspect, you'll want to verify that proper waste disposal is being practiced. Uh, both inside and outside of your operation, and 
you'll want to pay attention to like the dumpsters. Are the lids being closed? Are the back doors being closed? Inside, is the trash being taken out often enough? And then finally, you'll want to include in your checklist to assess staff training and knowledge. So review the training programs that are provided to staff members and assess their understanding of food safety principles. Make sure that employees are knowledgeable about allergen management, foodborne illnesses, hand hygiene, cross-contamination and prevention, and the proper use of cleaning chemicals. Believe it or not, you during your inspection uh, for some jurisdictions, the auditor or health inspector will ask the person in charge some food safety questions. And that is a violation. If you do not have the proper knowledge, you will get uh, a violation for that. So it's good to keep in mind. So um, earlier in the conversation, you mentioned documents a couple of times. So exactly what documents should be reviewed and how do I best maintain my records? Yes, great question. So you'll want to review your documentation before you start your self-audit. Just make sure that you're on the right foot to begin with. So gather and review all relevant documentation related to food safety. So your standard operating procedures, your SOPs, your permits, any licensees, health inspection reports, your cleaning schedules, your temperature logs, training records of all employees, your supplier certificates, pest control reports, and maintenance logs. So it's quite a list, but in this checklist that you're creating, I recommend that you put something along the lines of check a random date three weeks ago. That way you look at the logs to ensure that they're being filled out daily. So when your health inspector comes, of course, they'll see today's training, uh, today's temperature logs and any relevant cleaning info. But oftentimes they'll also look at a random, random date, date just to make sure that you are filling them out daily. And you'll want to verify that the records are easily accessible, up to date, and maintained for the required time periods. We recommend usually about three months. But back to them being easily accessible, I recommend putting all of these documents into a centralized location. It can be either a binder, it could be somewhere where everyone, all employees know where that is located and that it ends up in the same place each time. Because every time that we would do inspections when I was a health inspector, we would show up and look for these documents and managers would scramble to try to find them. And oftentimes it just looks like you just don't have those records. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving that poor appearance or, you know, not keeping track of your logs daily. Just make sure that they're in a centralized location on a binder. You can put, um, you can laminate it to protect it from other food, food contact surfaces as well. But making sure you know where they are is a key part of these documents. Okay. Thank you so much, Carla, for your recommendations on preparing for a self audit. Really look forward to gaining your insights on conducting the audit in our next session based on this created plan. And thank Absolutely. you to our viewers for joining Tag Talks on current and impactful industry trends and events. Be sure to watch part two of Food Service Self Audits and stay tuned to all things food safety and public health by clicking subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified of new videos and then click insights to subscribe to our weekly articles. Thank you again, Carla. Thank you.